I'm gonna go up here to organization. This is also gonna open up an additional PowerPoint. What I discovered about PowerPoint is it's a great organizational tool if you teach a class where you want to constantly bring in brand new information. One of the ways that I like to get current information is DIG. And essentially what DIG is, is it's a website that allows you to look. Basically, it's a popularity contest of what's going on on the web. And you can look at it really recently over a 24-hour span, seven hours. Anyway, you can come across things that you can bring into your classroom. And the classroom I'm specifically thinking about is my nutrition class. And what I was left with for the longest time before I figured this out about PowerPoint is I was left having to photocopy things off or put links up and things like that, put links on CE6, WebCT, or Angel, things like that. But I realized that PowerPoint is a great way to organize this. And I'm gonna flip through this rather rapidly and just point out some of the things that I'm pulling from the web that I can organize in one concise PowerPoint presentation where students can go to and it serves as a link to all those things that I find relevant. I'm skipping over these slides because I wanna to get to the main part of this so I can bring in a video by John Stewart. I can bring in a YouTube video. And if I click on these videos, I would actually go out to the video at The Daily Show. I kind of wait for that to load up, but I've got several little clips that would generate discussion, several little presentations, a little YouTube. got newspaper articles. Just let me skip through this really kind of quickly and show you that you get slate articles, all kinds of discussion points for students to talk about. At this point I have something like 150 slides. Everything from high fructose corn syrup to the counterpoint. So you can bring in a lot of different sources and just have them ready. And I found that actually when anything kind of comes up that's remotely related to one of these slides, I can easily go to a source and begin to talk about it. So if a student brings up a diet pop or they bring up high fructose corn syrup, I've got this at the ready for the student to view. I also want to take us down here to the animation, different things that we can do with animation. I want to take you over to PowerPoint Heaven. And PowerPoint Heaven is just a site where there's people that have clearly made PowerPoint their means of animation and drawing pictures. So this is their actual website. And they've got various tutorials and various drawings, PowerPoint works, and things like that. So this is a person showing how you can basically animate or make drawings, very complex drawings. It's Michael Jackson, if you haven't figured that out yet. So this is a game. other things. This is basically scenario solving is what I would call this. And while I don't necessarily envision doing crime solving, I can definitely as an AMP instructor think of different scenarios that I, that I would like a student to have to walk through and solve their way through. I'm not very good at motion paths yet, but basically this is a figure that I'd like to generate where one of the things that happens in the kidney, specifically in the proximal convoluted tubule, is over on the left would be urine. And over on the right is some of the things you want to get back out of your, your urine and into your blood. The way you do that is you move sodium from the urine into the blood. And when sodium moves, it generally pulls water. And when water moves, then other things go along with the water. And so this is a very quick and ugly animation. Clearly, I'm not very good at this yet, but I'm showing how the first step, the first most important step, is the movement of sodium. 
One of the most difficult things to find an animation for is something called the countercurrent multiplication in the loop of handling. I'm definitely not very good at this animation yet, but I see the potential for generating animations to help students understand things more in a movement type fashion. It's very difficult to explain countercurrent multiplication to students, and so animations are generally kind of nice. But they're awfully hard to find on the web. As long as I'm talking about this, one of the things I'd like to just point out is PowerPoint is a reasonable animator. It's definitely not Adobe Flash, but people like me that generally figure that they're kind of computer savvy are never, or at least it's in the five-year plan to learn Adobe Flash. It might be a long time before I get an understanding of the true animation programs like Adobe Flash. So this might just bridge that gap until I have the time. Next, I want to come over here and talk about podcasting. Include the heart, this is just the blood vessels of a podcast. Creating an audio track to accompany your PowerPoint is really no more difficult than hooking up a microphone, clicking on the slideshow tab, and clicking on record narration. What this is going to do is it's going to record a separate file for each slide. And that's actually really convenient for the student because if they miss a particular part of the lecture, rather than having to fast forward or find that part on some recorded other kind of device, they can just go to the slide that they need to see or that they need to hear again. And they can just listen into the audio with those particular slides. Some of the cautions that you need to be aware of if you do do PowerPoint with audio is that PowerPoint will cut off like the last second of your speech. And so you need to pause a little bit before you transition from one slide to another. Another thing is, is if you jump back to a previous slide, it's going to re-record over what you had recorded for that slide. So if you're recording a PowerPoint or if you're doing it in front of a class, you can only move forward, you can't move backward. This feature is actually kind of convenient when you are recording your PowerPoints because if you don't like what you said and you want to re-record it, it's just as simple as jumping forward and jumping back. Also, I'll talk about it elsewhere in this PowerPoint, but there's software specifically from a company called Moya, and there's several companies that do this, that will record a PowerPoint with audio as an iPod or a podcast, so something that can be viewed as a movie file. Okay, so on PowerPoint with audio, again, it's not the most robust system, and actually it's not the kind of thing that I could do to record what I'm doing right now. I could not use PowerPoint to record what I'm doing right now because I'm jumping in and out of different PowerPoints, and I want to show my mouse on the screen and things like that. I'm actually using Camtasia at this moment. But PowerPoint with audio is actually functional for recording just lectures. You can actually wear a little Xbox microphone, and so you can get yourself an Xbox 360 microphone, this will Bluetooth to your computer and you could wear this as you are lecturing or you could simply record a PowerPoint with audio as you sat at your computer and recorded it. So it's a fairly simple way to do it and as I said in that recording it's actually fairly easy to do it with PowerPoint because if you don't like what you said you don't have to go through editing software and get rid of what you said. You can just back back up over the slide and re-record it. I like that podcasting allows me to put stuff up on YouTube Here's an example of a little YouTube that I created with PowerPoint to make it kind of easy. When we get to the end of Anatomy and Physics, so that you can see, now acids so can, can disturb proteins, but one of the other things it can do is disturb potassium. It basically kicks it out of cells and causes hyperkalemia. It causes the amount of potassium outside of the cell to rise. So it's fairly simple to make one of these videos with the narrate function in PowerPoint. Now if you want to convert it to an AVI or you want to convert it to a QuickTime or a movie file so that people can listen on podcasts, then there's software that's, that's relatively inexpensive. This is PowerPoint to DVD. There is a PowerPoint to movie file that's actually that I picked up for about $30. And so that's a lot cheaper than PowerPoint to DVD. But these will convert PowerPoint files to AVI files or files that are available to iPods and various media devices. So PowerPoint to video converter, I guess now is about $50. The other thing I like about PowerPoint is you can put together instruction that's available just for a few students or students that are particularly advanced. You can put together a little audio PowerPoint for those students to review. Like I put together audio PowerPoints of 12 lead EKG, or if a student wants a little bit more understanding of something called the Wiggers diagram, I just have this PowerPoint that I make available on Angel and the students can just download and listen to it and look at it.